Gamers, Matt Lemke here with your Gamer Goggles. And today we're going to take a look at uh, Pathfinder Battles Deadly Foes. This is kind of a rare experience for me. I don't usually get to buy the plastic minis that often because I have so many minis I don't really need them, but this is something I'm hoping to start doing in the future. I want to be able to maybe break a whole case instead of a brick. Um, but they add up fast, as you know. So, with no ado, we're going to take a look at Deadly Foes. This is uh, eight boosters, and uh, it should give you an idea of what you can get out of the case and what you need to make your set complete. Uh, for those of you that don't already have your set, because Deadly Foes has been out for a little bit, we're also going to take a look at Maze of Death uh, next week. So, without wasting any more time... Deadly Foes. I have no idea what's in here because I don't really follow the minis, although on the side they show you some of the cool things you can get. And I'm not going to be nice about keeping these boxes. I'm just going to reach in and pull the stuff out. Throw the box out because I'm not keeping them. I'm going to store them another way. We have, wow, I love the fact that they paint the text on the bottom. The old D&D uh, &D minis used to have just black raised, raised lettering, and it was a lot harder to read. This is a nice size. This is a Hellhound. Uh, there's 46 figs in the set. And we have, uh-oh. We have one figure that is broken. Um, being a mini guy, this is a... This is a super easy fix. Just a little bit of super glue there. And, uh, well, detail's pretty good. Uh, if you like to play with mini, actually, I'll, I'll actually, before I fix this guy up, I'll do a little video on how to make him a little bit prettier. Um, there's a lot of black there. So, and we have uh, Aaron A's Devil, 23 of 46. So there's two ways you can fix this, and we'll just talk about this really quickly. You can pin them, which is probably what I'm going to do. I'm going to take a, a paper clip and drill two holes in here. And, well, yeah, two holes probably. Or you can just super glue them and be done with it. But I uh, am most likely going to pin them. Um, and, I'm all, like I said, I'm going to do some highlights. Basically, I'm going to dry brush them with some uh, electric blue. So we have a Thrun Enforcer. I wonder how many are going to repeat with only 46 figs out of 8 boosters, getting uh, 4 figures to a booster. So we have a Salamander. Ooh, he's 3 of 46. And, okay, so sometimes uh, you can just get away with like, you could dip this figure in boiling water, and then you can straighten out the spear if you want, or you can take a hair dryer to it. Uh, booster number two. So, well, first, the big fig is a cave giant. Then we have a fire diabolist, or diabolist, depending on how you wish to say it. I say it diabolist, like diabolic, or dia. Somebody might say dia. Wow, that's kind of sexy there. We have Perry. I like the clear plastic stuff. I'm not sure you could do anything really with paint to it to highlight it. Like I don't know. We'll find out. Maybe I'll try it. We'll see. We have a tiny little imp. Let's zoom in on that, give you some more detail. Try and get it, there you go, there's some better light. Put my 
my finger behind it. Maybe that'll help see it. There we go. Booster three. Nice big fig in this one. So we have. You know, are my scissors handy? No, they're not. We have a giant crab. Kind of pretty cool looking figure. Hobgoblin Cleric, always a good figure to have in your collection. Can't have enough goblins and hobgoblins. And the hobgoblins, in my opinion, when it comes to figures, are always the guys that get overlooked. We have a cockatrice. Wow, they're a lot smaller than I envisioned them. Much smaller than I envisioned them. And for the big fig. This is really good, actually. Come on. You get a flight stand for the giant eagle. Giant Eagle actually has a pretty good amount of detail in it. The white lines really help a lot. If that was all dark, that would be a, a little problematic. It might be a little too um, templated. I'm not sure an eagle would look like that in real life. It would be a little bit more breakage and stuff maybe. But, uh, you know, if you want to add a little bit of detail, it, it won't take much with this figure. Just a wash. And I'm not sure how this goes in here. Oh, there we go. It's actually a pretty good sized figure. Put them in the palm of your hand. Good detail in that figure too. Next booster. colors for it. Uh, that's one thing that I think WizKids has really stepped up to since they came around in 2000. Disappeared for a while. Um, and then they came back. I think the level of their figures detail and their painting jobs has gone up. Um, I'm, I'm actually pretty impressed. I'm halfway through and nothing is repeated yet. Uh, so we have a Strix Sorcerer here. Actually, he's a really cool figure. Uh, I, I want to do one thing with this guy. It, it won't matter much. Well, actually, I want to do two things. I want to highlight his cheek structure a little bit as a painter. Just by taking some um, on this guy. Maybe his wings, too, a little bit. But you can see they already did it with his wings. You can see those spots. They did a pretty good job. Uh, maybe a little bit more on the tips that are higher. Maybe his face a little bit. And then I've got this glow-in-the-dark paint that I want to give him for his eyeballs. <laughs> We have uh, we'll have an invisible guardian. Hmm. For something that's invisible, he's pretty easy to see. That would be my critique on that guy. But you gotta be able to see him to play with him. Wait. Look, it's my invisible guardian. Oh, look at that. I, I didn't know I needed that, but there we go. Check it out. I need more of these people. Hey, what is it? Did I throw out? I might have, just, I might have thrown out a piece. Okay, so I do not know if this figure comes with a base. 
Um, I'm hoping it does because there's no number on it. So I have to do a little bit of research now. See if maybe my base didn't come with it or maybe maybe it uh, doesn't come with a base. But I like this. Uh, I've actually been working on something like this in a campaign of mine for a while. Uh, I like the fact that they did uh, what they did here. You can see though that the paint is been hit a little bit so um, maybe touching up some of these corners, roughing up the edges a little bit. When I say roughing up the edges, I mean taking a, a brush much smaller than this and just dry brushing some of the high spots, like these corners here, and maybe the corners by the letters a little bit because they're gonna be a little bit higher. Your, when your brush is dry, you'll be able to hit that and cover up those excess spots, make it look like wear and tear on the rock or the stone or whatever, you know. Again, still over halfway through and no repeats. That's pretty awesome, I think. Um, back in the day, if this was a Mage Knight brick, early Mage Knight days, we'd have tons of repeats. So, this is what, Booster, booster 5, I believe. When in doubt, use a knife. All right, so we have Kekitar Protein. Kekitar. I like the colors. They did a good job with teeth. The green, the fading of the purple. Um, I really do like it. <laughs> That's got to be an alchemist. Hobgoblin alchemist. All right. This guy's glossy. He glows a little bit. So he's he's a wet lizardman, right? No, nope. he's a torrent hell knight. Not the colors I anticipated, but cool. And this has got to be a hobgoblin ranger. Oh, archer. Close. Hobgoblin archer. No repeats still. I am super impressed by that. Nothing in the box. All right. So we have a Celestial Sentinel. I kind of like this guy. There's not enough dog boy love in, in fantasy literature. We have House Drake. Man, that thing is tiny. He could ride on my shoulder. So we have Sarah Barry, Sir Barry, I mean, uh, which is like a, I don't know, kind of a cross between a baboon and a three-headed dog. That, that, that's the best description I've got. Good colors. Oh, and the big fig. Well, I, I think, I'm not entirely sure, but I bet this is a unicorn. Pure white unicorn at that. Two boosters left. This booster's looking pretty cool. Push these guys back a little bit. No, I'm not a fan of the tape on these, but I understand the necessity of it. <gasps> is that a Bodok? No, it's a doppelganger, which is just as cool.
Oh no! It's a candlestick. I like it. I need some more. <laughs> Accuser devil. That thing is small. Wow. And we have a Hellcat. He pretty much looks like he's on fire. I like, oh, look at how he glows underneath. That's, that's awesome. Last booster. Am I going to get something really cool? Let's find out. No repeats so far. That's uh, pretty amazing. So for those of you wondering about repeats, Gotta cut some tape here. Oh, my first one. Invisible Guardian. That's not so bad though. I mean, 32 figures, one repeat. It is 32, right? Four times eight. I don't know if I can do that thing. Don't have time to think about it. We have a Lamore Devil. That's not how I anticipated them looking, but that's pretty cool. We have a Celestial Trumpeter. The Invisible Guardian. And for the big fig, the final big fig, we have Ankh Hrav Drone. So, not so bad. So, in your 32 figs, I only had the one repeat. Um, got some cool pieces of terrain. Don't know what that one's called. I mean, this one's clearly a candlestick. Let me pull everything in here. Pop, pop out a little bit. That should be plenty of room. Lay down some of these figs so you can see them better. Bam. I think that's okay for 32 figs, one fig repeats. Unless, you know, you wanted the figs that re to repeat. Um, but thanks, thanks for, watching, for watching, guys. This has been a box breaking with Matt Lemke from Two Gamer Goggles, gamer-goggles.com. Have a great day.